Hello, this is Celeste of Astrology by Celeste. I'm an astrologer, coach, and intuitive, and I'm here with the Gemini season forecast for 2024. Let me share my screen. Here we go. So I am the host of the Celestial Insights podcast available wherever you listen, a board member for the Organization of Professional Astrologers, and a columnist for the Edge magazine. I lecture and teach internationally about astrology, and I offer personal readings as well as coaching and more. I'm on all the socials at Astrology by Celeste. And you could just go to my website, astrologybyceleste.com to book a reading or to grab my free um, Manifesting with the Moon guide. I love this quote. Curiosity is essential for progress. Only when we look to worlds beyond our own can we really know if there's room for improvement? And this was said by Simon Sinek. So Gemini, Gemini is a mutable air sign. The mutable signs are all flexible and adaptable. They come at the end of the season, of each of the seasons. Gemini is air, air communicates and connects. It's ruled by the planet Mercury. Mercury rules transportation, commerce, and communication of all kinds, as well as our thought processes. This is the sign of the twins. There is this duality nature of it. And you can look, this is the glyph of, of, of Gemini. And you can see the two columns and the, yeah. And high road Gemini can take the information from divine consciousness, the cosmos, whatever you'd like to call it, and channel it down to us mere mortals here on earth and disseminate it in a method that we can understand. This energy seeks an information, stimulation, and connection. It is curious. Children with strong Gemini energy come out of the wound asking why. Gemini season runs from May 20th to June 20th of this year. And these are a few of the important aspects that are having that are happening. If you want to dive deeper, you can follow me on socials or listen to the Celestial Insights podcast. But these are some I wanted to bring your attention to. This first one can be amazing. Venus, the planet of love, beauty, and harmony. Venus sweetens life. Venus connects. Is conjunct Jupiter, which is the planet of expansion. Jupiter broadens. Jupiter educates. Jupiter is the cosmic Santa Claus where you lean in just a little bit and it's like the blessings flow. Now it can also be the planet of too much of a good thing. And Venus and Jupiter are the benefics, meaning they both add to life and they're connected in the sky in the sign of Taurus where Venus is at home sitting on her throne where she can do what she does well which in this earthy sign is about nourishing the senses, having some enjoyment and relaxation and pleasure, getting grounded, rest and relaxation. This is Empress energy, if you know the tarot deck. Mm -hmm. And conjunct Jupiter just makes it even more delicious. And there's a smooth, easy flowing sextile to Neptune. And the word for sextiles is opportunity. And Neptune is the planet of illusions and, and higher consciousness, but also delusions. Um, it's also very compassionate. It's in the sign of Pisces, a water sign. So when you have an earth and water sextile, you can make your own magic. Now this perfects on May 23rd, but you can be seeing things coming in 
um, several days before. This is a really strong transit. So you may get opportunities to manifest your desires, things coming out of the blue positive that are in if your chart is activated, but we'll also be seeing things in the collective where, oh, this could be just beautiful energy. It can be a very creative time. So if you have any creative projects that you're working on, I'd really get working on them as soon as possible between now and then you can just really, really, really get in the flow. A good word for water energy is flow and water and earth makes uh, this fertile like mud. Um, you can create a masterpiece. Now in the kitchen with Taurus energy, creating these, you may have some of the best meals of your life. Your pants may not fit fit on um, May 24th, as well as they did like a week before. So just be aware to be mindful of overindulgence. Now you can also create a masterpiece on the canvas for people who are artists or whatever your medium is. Uh, can you feel the love? This is like big expansive love. This is like, now it could also be love bombing, which is not great, but yeah. Anyway, can you have compassion for others who are less fortunate um, and be generous with them? Relax and enjoy, but there could be really bad storms some places. So really pay attention to the weather because Jupiter makes everything bigger and Neptune rules the ocean and Pisces water. It can just be water, water everywhere. Now Jupiter enters the sign of Gemini on May 25th. So this is a switch. Jupiter changes signs every year. And when Jupiter is in your sun sign, it typically is a time when you're feeling good. When, uh, now the whole year is not gonna be perfect, but like you lean in a little bit and there's abundance coming and it's coming from potentially out Side yourself with Je Jupiter's in Gemini and air sign. Yeah, so this is a great time from May 25th till next June to growth through learning new skills, um, taking classes, great time to connect with others, networking. I want you to think local. Like Jupiter is expansive. It rules long distance travel. But Gemini is your local neighborhood. And especially with planes falling apart in the sky, this is a great next year until this gets under control to be going around in your local environment. Can you take a trip to the town next door or uh, use the highway, Gemini rules like the roadways, to explore new places. You'll be amazed potentially, depending on where you live, about how much there is around you that can be inspiring. Yeah, and enjoyable to, to, to visit. Now, Jupiter is in what we call detriment in Gemini. It does not like to be this in this sign and it just can be like just the floods of information. And with the United States being in an election year, you really want to be careful to check your sources because there's other things going on energetically with Pluto and Aquarius and Saturn and Pisces where you can't necessarily believe what you are reading and hearing and seeing because with AI, AI came out right about when, um, or what do you call it? Chat GPT came out right when Pluto went into Aquarius. And all of a sudden we are realizing the ability to like hoover up this information and yeah, and make it adjust it and what have you. And yeah, there can be a lot of misinformation with Jupiter in Gemini. And really be mindful about not scattering your energy and not letting yourself get too anxious with this energy. Can you use your breath, Gemini rules the lungs, to calm yourself down when you get really anxious or am amped up? Gemini energy can be very anxious. So keep that in mind. On June 4th, Venus, the planet of love, beauty, and harmony, goes Kazemi. So she's going through the heart of the sun. And what this means is as she's coming to it, 
she's old. Venus is old and it's happening in the sign of Gemini. Venus is old, decrepit, and there's this symbology of death, death, and then rebirth. So when she's like sitting on June 4th, this is a really great time to think about, ooh, what, she's sitting at the heart of the king. The sun is the king and you can ask for what you want. So think about that. Um, what do you desire out of relationships or Venus topics, out of money? Um, can you be more diplomatic? These are things to be thinking about. Now, it can also, when a planet goes through the sun, bring things to your conscious attention. The sun is a spotlight about relationships that may be, you may have some secrets unearthed. I do not recommend looking at anybody's text messages or anything like that because you may see something you do not want to see. Yeah, so keep that in mind. But it can be a little tricky with relationships around this time. So a week before and a week after, take extra care to nourish your relationships where there's a lot of love and try to not be um, too critical and what have you. Mm. Now, these can be tough days of Gemini season, June 8th through 12th, because there's lots of tension in the cosmos. There are lots of squares. So there's potential for fighting or having relationships breakdowns or breakthroughs. So just keep that in mind there. Yeah, it can be a little bit intense, those dates. The magic of the moon. Working with the moon cycles can help make bring the make the subconscious conscious. I have a free guide setting intentions with the moon. If you're looking at this on the edge, it's probably down at the bottom, or go to my website, astrologybyceleste.com, and you can download it from the home page. And it tells you all about the eight moon phases and give suggestions for what to do with them. Now, because of the way things are, we're having the full moon first in each season. So the full moon is at two Sagittarius. So if you know your chart, look to where you have Sagittarius and specifically if you have anything around two degrees. Full moons are times of high emotions when it's a time for celebration. There could be some great parties around this time all is illuminated. So something may come to your conscious attention about Sagittarius themes. And that could be things about long distance travel, your philosophy, higher education, um, overindulgence, overdoing things. Do you need to, what do you need to do in order to, in order to, get clear and get grounded. Um, it also is a great a Sagittarius energy is storytelling energy. So if you go to a party around this full moon, you may just have someone that there may be holding court. Yeah. At the full moon, we can release what no longer serves us, but, and ask for forgiveness. So at this full moon, there's incredible energy for expansion. How do you want to grow? How do you want to broaden? How do you want to expand yourself? and manifestation, watch out for overspending, ex excessive indulgence, and there could be really bad storms around this um, full moon. So depending where you live, you know, pay attention to the weather. Now the new moon on June 6th is in the sign of Gemini. So you wanna set intentions about Gemini things. How can you be more articulate? How can you be clearer in your communication? How can you be more curious? Take in new information. Get in touch with your siblings. Do something with your siblings. Gemini rules siblings. It rules children. It rules your local neighborhood, neighbors. Maybe you want to get together. Set intentions to get to know your neighbors better. It could be something that you want to do. Now, low road Gemini is being scattered. Where's my keys? Where's my wallet? Where's this? Where's that? So can you like maybe refine some stuff so you're not so scattered. Put your keys in the same place all the time. Leave early so you're not rushing everywhere. Yeah, like that June 8th through 12th, you really don't want to be rushing around. Yeah, because there could be a lot of conflict and stuff. Yeah. 
uh, being honest, uh, Gemini, Gemini, a shadow Gemini can be like someone who makes up stories so or lies. So if you have an issue, can you be more honest with yourself as well as others? But positive, can you be more sociable and get out and 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 connect? with people and learn from them. This, the new moon, it's on June 6th and it's at 16 Gemini. It's a time to set intentions, make wishes, have a ritual and initiate new projects. Can you nurture your spirit of collaboration and curiosity? Remember you have two ears and one mouth. So can you listen as well as talk? Prepare for revelations about how you engage in relationships with um, the coming Venus Kazemi, yes. And so now I'm gonna go into each of the signs of the Zodiac to give you a more focused information about what to be paying attention to. But, ooh, what is this? Okay. Gemini is the trickster. So of course there's something going wrong with my slide. That's all right. We are just gonna get it back up. Okay. Okay. So just making you aware of some upcoming events. I'm having a, a, a workshop online on Zoom for the Gemini moon, new moon called Birth of Venus on Sunday, June 2nd. You can sign up at astrologybyceleste.com. You can just get one or a pack of four. And I am going to be teaching at the Park City, Utah, OPA, Organization of Professional Astrology Retreat, October 16th to 24th. It's in person, all about moon mastery. You'll learn everything about the moon. So if you're really interested in astrology, check this out at OPA. Um, Opa, at the, does it say here, opaastrology.org, or you can go to my website and it's on the moon, mat, moon stuff page. Okay. So if you are an Aries sun or rising, so listen for your sun sign and your rising sign. So this, the sun is going to be going through your third house during this Gemini season, and you're, that's where you're going to have a new moon. And this house rules siblings, early education, communities, short trips, and the active mind. So set goals concerning networking, um, journaling practices. This is a great time to start a journaling practice if you don't have one. How can you tame your mind through meditation, or breath work, or what have you, if you feel like you're very scattered. It can be a great time to connect with your siblings or neighbors. And as well, there tends to be, when you have a new moon in your third house, you can be very busy, busy, busy. So keep that in mind. The Sagittarius moon will be in your, the full moon will be in your ninth house, illuminating ninth house topics. So when I get to the ninth house, maybe write down and you can think about, oh, these things are going to be coming to my attention. Yeah. So for Taurus, the sun is going to be traveling through your second house. The second house rules our resources, our income, our talents, our attitudes towards money, self-security needs. So this is a great time to be setting intentions and things will be coming up to your conscious awareness as the sun spotlight sees things about building savings, increasing your income, improving your self-esteem and honing your values. So you may have some stuff coming up about security. Be aware of that. This is a great month to be working on your budget or setting intentions about how you're going to grow grow your 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 wealth or things like that the full moon will be in your eighth house and things will be coming to your conscious attention around that so when i get to scorpio it'll i'll talk about that so for gem for 
For Geminis, this is your season. If you're a Gemini sun, happy birthday. This will be in your first house. The sun will be spotlighting. This can be a time you can get more attention from others. And the first house rules the self, the identity, the physical body. If you, This is a great time to set a doctor's appointment if you need a checkup. The appearance, you may decide that you want to, um, yeah, you want to make some changes around your appearance, add some new new things to your wardrobe, your image. Yeah. This is also like your this is also about like the mask you wear with others. So maybe you'll make some adjustments about how you present yourself to the world. So working on developing your confidence, creating actions around health. Maybe you want to start a new workout process work out something or eat better or whatever and how you assert yourself in the world for cancer suns and risings this is in your 12th house the 12th house is a house of solitude um self undoing secrets it's also hidden enemies endings mysticism escapism so when you have a new moon in your 12th house or it's being lit up this is a time where you may need some more rest. Great time to work on um, to work on your sleep hygiene. Slow down if you have some things that are self undoing, whether they're overworking, um, eating poorly, overindulging, escapism, spending too much time on that phone with the social media or watching too much TV or what have you. Set intentions and focus on like maybe taming some of those bad habits. Focus on your mental health. If you need some therapy or anything, go for, you know, you can schedule an appointment. Yeah. Focus on some spiritual practices. Great time to go on a retreat when you have a 12th house new moon. Oh, and the full moon will be in your sixth house. So you can listen for for Capricorn for that. Okay. So if you are a Leo sun or rising, you can, the this new moon is in your 11th house and the 11th house is a house of hopes and dreams, groups, friends and organizations, teams, the collective. This is Jan Spiller, uh, an astrologer calls this the granddaddy power period. So when you have a new moon in your 11th house, you just put your wishes out to the, to ask God, your guides, the your higher consciousness, whatever, your your spiritual angels to just ask, believe, receive. So you could do that with this new moon. Yeah, you make new moon wishes. Just wish. What do you want? Yeah, be specific. You can set intentions on how you're going to satisfy your deepest desires, achieve your biggest goals. And like, do you want to be, be more active in groups or leave a group or whatever? This can be what you've been thinking about setting intentions about. And you're going to see things come to your conscious awareness and release around fifth house topics. You'll see that when I get to Aquarius. If you are a Virgo, the sun is going through your 10th house of career, reputation, your calling, your public persona. You will be more visible at work. This is a great time to set up a meeting with your boss in order to talk about your future plans if you have a boss. Um, also, it can be a great time to think about, yeah, how you want to take your career to the next level. This is not a good time to slack off because with the sun going through this house in your chart, you will be more visible at work. So set objectives about your life goals, your career, and raising your public profile. And you'll be releasing and, and having things coming to your conscious attention or in your fourth house of home. Okay. So now we get to Libra. So for Libra, this sun is going through your, the sun is going through your ninth house. And so for 
Aries, this is where the full moon will be. So this is where you're going to be releasing the opposite sign. Yes. And so the, the ninth house is the house that rules foreign travel. So you may Libra decide to plan a trip, religion, philosophy. Um, it's also your in-laws. Maybe you'll be spending more time with your in-laws, higher courts, education, publishing. Maybe you want to start working on a book or something like for this Jupiter and Gemini is going to be amazing for people who want to use that energy in order to do some writing or, or things like that, because Gemini rules communication of all kinds. You can make plans to learn new skills, take a class, get involved in your local stuff, publish your work, expand your mind, local politics or legal affairs kind of local stuff to change the laws. Expanding your mind is great. For Scorpio, this new moon is going through your eighth house. The eighth house is a house of deep psychological processes. It rules sexuality, death, debt, inheritance, taxes, other people's property. Yeah, transformation, joint finances. So if you're in a relationship, you may, some spotlight may be on your budgeting, Um and you may like want to have a conversation with your partner about your spending or set intentions around how you want to reduce debt, increase savings. Um, there may be some things coming up where you need to face your shadows, the things you'd rather disown about yourself. Yes. Uh, if you're thinking you may need some therapy, this is a great time to evaluate or, or check out new therapists and things like that. The full moon is in your second house. And I talked about that with Taurus. You can think about those topics and releasing and things like that. Full illumination. For Sagittarius, this new moon is, the sun is going through your seventh house and that's where you're going to be having the new moon. The seventh house rules marriage, business partnerships, close one-on-one -on -one relationships like best friends, also open enemies, lawsuits, things like that. So there can be things spotlighted. Some things may come to your conscious attention about how you and your partner relate to one another at the full moon. Yeah. And, and at the new moon, you want to create actions about socializing one-on-one -on -one with people, maybe creating date nights or something with your partner, having healthy boundaries, bringing beauty into your life, or working on your serious relationship. If you're single, maybe make some plans to how you're going to find a relationship, whether you need a matchmaker or if you want to do the social, social stuff, you know, Bumble or whatever they're called. You can do that as well, Sagittarius. Oh, and the full moon's in your first house of the self. So yeah, some things may come up to your conscious attention around yourself. For Capricorn, sun and rising, there. this is the sun and the new moon will be in your sixth house. The sixth house rules routines and rituals, our daily habits. It's a sixth house of the mundane tasks. It's like burdens and toil. So there can be like things, just kind of irritating things that you just have to do when there is the sun is going through your sixth house. It's also the house of small pets and employees, like the job, you know, the job you do for the money you make and how you serve. It's a house of service. So you can set, this is a great time to set intentions about improving your health, like go straight to the doctor if something comes up. Um, think about how you can reduce anxiety if you have problems with it, replacing unhealthy habits, working on preventative health. Maybe you want to do some new vitamin routine or something like that. But the sixth, the first house is a house of vitality. The sixth house is the house of illness. So really pay attention if anything comes up Capricorn and just get it checked out right away. If you're an Aquarius, thus this new moon will be, and the sun will be going through your fifth house. 
The fifth house rules children, romance, love, sex for pleasure, vacations, creativity, fun. This is a great time. This is wonderful. Fifth house, new moons. Fifth house is wonderful. So it could be a great time to make resolutions to nurture your inner child, improve your relationships with your kids, build more joy in life or bring sexy back. And I shouldn't say the fifth house is wonderful. It depends on your chart about how wonderful your fifth house is. But in general, this it's a house of joy. So hopefully you will be making intentions and just even without making intentions, having some joy throughout this time. Oh, and if sexy left, think about bringing it back. For Pisces, the new moon is in your fourth house. The fourth house rules home, families, and foundation. That's the sun is going to be lighting some things up. So you may have more things coming up that you need to deal with home. It's also ancestry, psychology. So this is a great time to set intentions around your like things in your home. Do you want to do some decorating? Do you need some repair projects to be get done? Things like that. Do you want to spend more time with your parents or connecting with family? Um, do you need to build security? Maybe you need a security system. Do you want to do an ancestry project? You can think about that. Great time to think about life work balance with the full moon being in your 10th house of career. So that's it for this month. Again, I am Celeste at astrology by Celeste.com. And yeah, have a wonderful Gemini season. Thank you for watching.